So I'm back. I'm back with PC settings. Earlier on, I did Xbox settings for this channel. So if you're on Xbox, go and check those out. PC is a little bit more in depth, but we're going to get into it and have a look at all the settings. So if this helps you, hit the like button and subscribe button, all that kind of stuff. My name is Easy Now. I am covering for DPJ. You can find my channel down below, but you don't have to come and subscribe if you don't want to. Now, my PC isn't the greatest PC in the world. It's fairly good. It's fairly good. I spent a lot of money on it. And as you can see, when we first born in, this is on, I think, Ultra settings. And it's already a lot smoother than Xbox's, but it is also not that great. But let's go in and look at the settings. So the first thing you want to do, again, like I said on the Xbox one, is make sure all your saves are the way you want them to be so that you'll never lose a game if anything crashes or anything like that. Now, display is where it gets interesting. Now, borderless full screen. When it's on, will give you better performance, better quality, and you know it's just something that you should have on. The window size doesn't matter because you're going to have um, borderless full screen. The monitor, obviously, the monitor of choice for your PC. And then we get down to things like dynamic resolution. Now, if you've got a low-end PC, you want this on. I'm going to turn it off personally and just see what happens because I haven't even actually tested these, but it should make the game run smoother and look better. Then we have the render resolution scale. We need to turn this up to 100% and it will display your game at the native dimensions of your monitor. And you want those to match up because obviously then it all runs smoother on your monitor. Then we have the graphics presets. This is totally, totally up to you and obviously how, how strong your pc is and what it can you know achieve shadow quality apparently the shadows in this game are really really good so you want to have this as high as possible same with indirect lighting reflections totally up to you but that and particle quality should be high potentially ultra if you can actually get it to that level on your pc volumetric lighting can go down to high as well and crowd density is something that you need to figure out yourself. This means that the NPCs in cities and stuff, there'll be more of them because it's high. You can go medium or low. I think I'll end up going to medium just for the sake of, you know, having my game run a bit smoother. But the thing you need to do straight away off the bat is make sure your motion blur is completely off because motion blur sucks and it ruins the game. Then we have the GTAO quality, and this is like your ambient occlusion. And you can, again, decide what you want it to be. I'm actually just going to set it to high and the grass quality as well, because these are things that usually take up a lot of power and processing. And having them on high usually is as good as they are on ultra as well. Um, so that's totally up to you what you do and how you run it. But I feel like you don't need to have them on ultra. Contact shadows aren't genuinely necessary for this game, so it's completely up to you. I'm going to set them to medium because I just don't feel like you need them. If you're getting screen tearing and stuff, you're going to want V-Sync on because that's going to help with tearing. I'm going to risk it and, and turn it off and see what happens. Then we have upscaling. Now, upscaling has different ones that you can choose. You generally don't necessarily need it on, to be honest. But FSR2 is for AMD um, and CAS contractive adaptive sharpening is probably just like built into the game, um, but you can turn it off and that's what I'm going to do. Enable VRS, leave it on. Um, we're going to turn off the film grain intensity just like on the Xbox. You could leave a little bit on if you want a little bit of a cinematic experience, but I think for me personally, it needs to be turned off. And then you've got enable depth of field. Again, up to you, but the game's going to look a lot better and, and a bit more immersive if you have it on. Then very much like the Xbox, if you go to interface, you can turn on damage numbers, which I personally like. So that's what I'm going to do. You can turn your hood opacity down and all of that stuff. Obviously, crosshairs is going to be very useful. Controls, again, all sensitivity stuff. This is going to be totally how you experience the game and what you want. You've got mouse look sensitivity. You've got controller look sensitivity. I am currently on a controller. Um, just because I am busy recording and doing a lot of things. Um, your outpost stuff down here for when you're building, you can change. You've got invert in your flight up here and all things to do with flight. A lot of this you're going to figure out as you're going through the game, um, but I will actually reduce my controller sensitivity 
a little bit because I feel like the game is a bit sh a bit a bit too much right off the bat until you get used to it. So I'm probably going to turn it down by about five or six percent. Then we go to bindings again. So many different bindings, so many different keys that you can use. And um, also, I think you can change, obviously, as well on your keyboard and mouse. But everything here for you can be changed. For controller, I'm going to, you know, you could potentially change jump because Y is a bit awkward. But if you've got back paddles and stuff, you can set them, obviously, to be able to jump quite easily. And obviously, if you go into bindings using your mouse and keyboard, you can see everything here is also available to be changed. And that's great because having key bindings to be able to be changed in games for me is very important and I like it a lot and I'm glad that they did it in such an in-depth way. It's pretty goddamn cool in my opinion. Next audio, like I said on Xbox, I'm probably going to turn down my own footsteps to about 80% because sometimes it can be a bit distracting and you want to hear other people's footsteps. If anyone's sneaking up on you, you want to get them. And then accessibility, all this stuff here is fairly obvious you know you got your general subtitles dialogue subtitles and this one here the enables the use of iron sights mode when aiming a weapon as a toggle instead of a hold now that sounds to me like when you press your aim button it will hold it in position until you press it again and then you'll come out of aim so if you want to put this on it means that i believe when you let go of the aim button it will also stop aiming but i'm not sure yet i haven't had a weapon yet um but i feel i feel like that's what it is and now, if we go into the game, you can see that the game looks much better, much smoother, much cleaner. Um, and my PC has got a lot of things running at the moment, and I've still got pretty much all the frames that I need. And it looks goddamn gorgeous and beautiful. And yeah, so those are the settings I would choose personally for PC. I hope this helped you out. If it did, hit the like button and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you're playing on PC or Xbox. Are you enjoying it? Are you not? And all of that great stuff. Well, thank you for watching. I've been easy now. You guys have been awesome.